ArcGIS Online is a powerful mapping and location platform. It allows you to harness spatial data and to easily create beautiful maps that tell the stories within that data. And the newest additions to ArcGIS Online greatly enhance these capabilities. Let's take a look at some of these new features. This is recreation data provided by the USDA Forest Service. I'd like to create maps of different regions of the country so the public is aware of recreation opportunities in these areas. But first, let's work on customizing the base map. I've enabled my organization to use Esri vector tile base maps. In the gallery, there are a variety of standard vector maps that I can choose, such as the world street map. These base maps provide a sharp, clean backdrop for my data. But I want to try a different style than these, so I'll search for other vector base maps that I've gathered from the Living Atlas. So there's newspaper, but it's too black and white. There's also Nova, but it's a little too sci-fi. Or there's mid-century, which I'll choose because it's artistic and well-suited for Forest Service data. But I want to add some texture to it. So to do that, I'll turn on the USGS topography layer, and I'll simply adjust the transparency on mid-century. We'll turn on the entire federal lands layer. Now that the base map looks good, let's start working with the recreation data. Previously in ArcGIS Online, you could only aggregate points into existing polygon layers. But with the latest release, you can now use aggregate points to generate custom rectangles or hexagons. So let's see what the rectangles look like. Now we better understand where our data is most concentrated. We'll turn off the federal lands layer so you can get a better idea for a second. And we see that there's lots of recreation opportunities in the Pacific Northwest. So let's create a view layer. This will enable us to spatially filter our feature layer so that we only see the data that we want to see. And we'll do that by setting a view definition. And with the latest release of ArcGIS Online, I can now define an area of interest meaning that I can draw a polygon around all the concentrated recreation in the Pacific Northwest so that this is the only data that appears when we add this view to the map. I can also filter the definition further using the data's attributes. This way, I can break the data into different types of activities, such as camping and cabins, so the map has a specific purpose. Before heading back to the map, I'd like to point out some of the new features in the item details page. First, there's the new item status bar, which helps us understand how well documented this item is. It's telling me that I should add a description as my top improvement. And when I enter a description and save, the status bar updates, and I'm given a new suggestion. Another new feature is content status. This lets you designate items as authoritative to promote their use. So we'll mark this as authoritative. Now we'll head back to the map, turn off the previous recreation data, and we can easily add our new camping view layer by searching in my organization for authoritative content only. Next, we'll want to change the symbol to something easily recognizable as campsites. There are many different shapes and symbols to choose from, including the standard government symbol for campsites. And we'll lower the symbol size a bit as well. Now this looks like camping locations, but there's still too many campsites to really make sense of the data. With the new clustering capabilities in ArcGIS Online, I can summarize the number of campsites by icon size. And I can use the slider to easily control the amount of clustering that occurs. And for a finishing touch, I'll turn that USA Federal Lands layer back on for more context. I now have a beautiful detailed map that shows a concentration of campsites in the Pacific Northwest. And using a configurable template, this map can be placed inside a web application so the public can access it and discover this information as well. With these new capabilities in ArcGIS Online, making beautiful maps is easier and more intuitive than ever before.
and the unique products you create will be invaluable for sharing your data with others. Thank you. And with that, let's now turn it over to Madeline so she can show us what's new with 3D in ArcGIS Online. Thanks, Kyle. Continuing on our journey through ArcGIS Online, let's dive into the world of 3D web scenes. This simple but powerful web scene allows hikers to view the landscape of popular trails, such as these near Mount Jefferson in Oregon. Here you can see high-resolution train data blending seamlessly into Esri's World Elevation Service. Viewers can truly get a sense of each hiking trail as they're planning for their next backpacking trip. And with capabilities like the new 3D measurement tool, we can even calculate the elevation gain over the course of the hike. Here, it's about 1,000 feet of elevation gain over one mile to the lookout point. To show you a second example, let's go to another one of my favorite places, Honolulu, Hawaii. Places like Honolulu have massive amounts of high-resolution LiDAR publicly available. And we can use this LiDAR to extract 2D building footprints and other assets, to create 3D buildings, and to even publish the point cloud as a, as a scene layer to represent vegetation. And by mashing these layers together in a web scene, I can create the right 3D map at the right time fast. But government agencies aren't the exclusive hosts for 3D, for 3D objects. As we partner, Cyclomedia collects LiDAR over entire cities using terrestrial laser scanning. And they publish these point clouds to ArcGIS, delivering more value to their users. Cyclomedia works with cities all over the world, like the city of Scheidem in Holland, delivering big data over the web that's easy to share and accessible to anyone. City staff no longer need to visit numerous locations to survey assets in the field because asset location information can be updated remotely. Now, web scenes have measurement tools that work with any type of 3D content. For example, here we want to measure the dimensions of the street sign so it can be replaced. We can collect this information in just a couple of seconds. Anyone can create on-the-fly measurements quickly. And this entire point cloud can be symbolized without having to be republished representing things like true color with RGB values, class, intensity, and even elevation, like you see here. Let's go to the city of Helsinki in Finland, where high-resolution building models are used to represent underlying information, like building construction year. And by using the web scene smart mapping capabilities, anyone can create beautiful 3D maps. For example, here we can highlight the older buildings with a darker color blue my favorite color. Point clouds, 3D features, 3D mesh, the underlying technology for each of these layer types is the I3S scene layer, an open specification that was recently adopted by OGC as a community standard. Now, what we've seen so far has all been in a browser using web scenes. However, as many of you have requested, with the next release of ArcGIS Online, Web3D will also work on mobile phones and desktops. Anyone will be able to interact with the 3D scene on their phone just by clicking on a URL. And not only will it work on the phone, it'll work fast. So let me get started by opening the Chrome browser. I'm going to go into ArcGIS Online, where I have a 3D web scene of the city of Raleigh in North Carolina. It opens in the scene viewer, the same desktop application you already use today in the browser. However, it recognizes that this is on a phone, so it'll optimize the UI to fit the phone screen. This scene contains hundreds of thousands of buildings and trees. I can navigate around and even zoom in to get more detail. And notice how fast the data streams in. It's really responsive. The scene layers contain the building geometry and also the building attributes. And let's focus in on this redevelopment site where I have two building proposals. I can click on the building to get a pop-up with more information about the project. But building attributes are used for more than just pop-ups. They can also be used for data-driven visualization, like you see here from the transportation department in the city. They ran an analysis on walk times to closest bus stops. Here in the downtown, all of the buildings are in blue, which means they're well-connected. 
However, in the outskirts of the city, residential buildings are all in yellow, which means they're 10 minutes or more from the closest bus stop. Information that's important to both planners and commuters. 3D is more accessible than ever. With high resolution data, more available data, high speeds, and um, complete mobility. Take advantage of these new capabilities. I'm so excited to see what new solutions you create.